what is up YouTube and welcome to another video now I've covered a few videos on on CICD on Kubernetes and in this video we're going to specifically be looking at Jenkins so we're going to look at how to spin up Jenkins on a Kubernetes cluster I'm going to show you the pros and cons and things you have to look out for and we're going to use it to build and push docker images so without further ado let's go Okay, so to kick off, everything you're about to see is on GitHub. I have a full Docker development guide, Prometheus monitoring with Kubernetes guide as well. So if we head into this repo, you'll see there's a Jenkins folder and everything I'm about to show you today will be in this folder so you can follow along. Now I like to keep things simple. Under the Jenkins folder, I have my deployment YAMLs for Kubernetes. It's pretty self-explanatory. We have a Kubernetes deployment, we call it Jenkins, and everything about our deployment is defined here. The Docker image we want to pull and deploy, we can define resource limits and the volume mount where Jenkins will persist its files. And then also we have a Kubernetes service. This will define how Jenkins um, receives traffic. So we have one port for the UI and two ports for the slaves to connect to, so the, the slave can connect to the agent when we spin it up. In order for Jenkins to maintain its state, it needs files. So Jenkins stores all its states on the file system. Now Kubernetes has a concept of persistent volume and that allows us to store um, files in a persistent volume. Now Depending on your cloud provider, there's different types of volume plugins that you can de define and deploy. Now, I've been running Jenkins for many years and I've always used the Azure file share. And you can use, if you're on a, a different cloud provider, look for a network type share because Jenkins does not need super fast storage. It doesn't need super reliable storage like a database would. It doesn't need SSD or anything like that. Network files is, is perfect because if your Jenkins container dies and it spins up on another Kubernetes node, having a network drive helps keep those files outside of the cluster. So you can upgrade the cluster, you can move your Jenkins uh, master around, and I've never had an instance where the files got corrupted. I've never lost my files estate, and it's really easy to back up and migrate Jenkins around. Now in this demo, I'm gonna use a Kubernetes 1.14 feature, which is a local persistent volume. So that allow us to set up a persistent Persistent volume and claim that is local so it's basically from the node because I'm running docker for Windows I can persist all this file onto the node um, if you're running a single node kubernetes cluster this may work for you but keep in mind that you would need to persist that data and keep it backed up if that machine dies you'll be in trouble so, so that's why I always like to resort to a network share and this is not really uh, good for databases and other things is specific to Jenkins um, Jenkins works really well with a network share so let's take a look how I did that if I go to persistent volume I define a persistent volume saying type local and I just give it some storage I'm just going to give it four gigs of storage in this case and I want to mount this folder on the host now I've left the example here of what like an Azure file share would look like if you want to use a network storage like um, Azure you can go ahead and try this one out and then to assign um, data from that volume, you need a claim. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna deploy a persistent volume claim. I'm gonna call it Jenkins claim and I'm gonna give it four gigs of storage. So I'm gonna basically claim all the storage out of that volume. Again, I've left an example here. If you wanna deploy this on Azure using an Azure file share, um, that'll be the claim you can use. Now, if we go back to the Kubernetes deployment spec for Jenkins, we go down and we'll see that there's a volume mount specified that means we want to grab the volume mount called jenkins and we want to mount all our files locally in that folder this is where jenkins stores everything and we want to use a volume also called jenkins and we want to map it to that persistent volume claim so now kubernetes will use that persistent volume to basically store and mount do a docker mount basically into var jenkins home so whenever our jenkins shuts down and comes back the files are, are persisted the first thing you're going to want to do is install docker for windows i have a guide on it link in the description you want to also configure your kubectl so you have an, a kubernetes cluster up and running and then you'll want to create a namespace called jenkins i already have a namespace like that so it already exists 
and then we run a simple one-liner to say in that Jenkins namespace just apply all these YAML files and it'll go and deploy apply the deployment the persistent volumes the services and everything that we need okay so if we do um, kubectl get pods we can see our Jenkins server is up and running now when Jenkins starts up it's obviously going to be locked so what we need to do is say kubectl um, logs get the logs from the pod and then you'll see that um, it posts basically its password in in here so we're going to go ahead and grab that and now that we have the password we're going to go ahead and port forward into our jenkins master and then we can go into localhost 8080 and we can access our jenkins now we need to unlock it so we need to um, paste the password and then we need to go ahead and set up now for the getting started i'm just going to go ahead and install the selected plugins and let that run through that may take a couple of minutes to complete once that is done you can go ahead and create your first admin user and you can configure the url and start using it so the first thing we're going to want to do um, once we have jenkins up is go to manage jenkins then go to configure system or manage plugins um, and then go to available and what we want to do is search for Kubernetes. And when we find Kubernetes here, um, we want to go ahead and install that one. But that'll take a couple of minutes to install. And then when that's done, you're going to want to go ahead and do this restart thing. Then you'll want to refresh once it's done, log in again. And now we'll want to head back to manage Jenkins and we want to go down to manage nodes and clouds and we can say configure clouds and add new cloud Kubernetes. Now a whole bunch of stuff will come up that we have to fill out. Now in our GitHub repo, I have a readme file that you can take a look at. The readme file has all the details of what we need to fill out. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly fill this out and I'll be right back. Now to test this, I'm going to create a new pipeline. So we're going to go new job and we're going to select the pipeline. I'm just going to call it test, say OK. And then what we're going to want to do is go down and configure our pipeline. So what we want to do is add a Git repository. So we're going to say pipeline definition from SCM and we're going to select Git, pass in the GitHub um, URL. And this one's a public repo, so I don't have to specify anything else and my Jenkins file will be if we take a look at our repo it's going to be inside of Jenkins folder and there's a Jenkins file over there so we're just going to have to point to that one saying Jenkins slash Jenkins file and we can do a lightweight checkout that's fine I'm going to go ahead and save that and then I'm going to go ahead and kick that off right so I go ahead and I click um, to start the build and we can see now it's gone ahead and downloaded our Jenkins file from from Git and it's waiting for a slave to come online. And if I do kubectl get pods, we can see it's creating a slave. So every every build that runs will have a new pod spun up in Kubernetes that will have access to the Docker daemon and be able to do Docker builds. We can start building our container images. All right. So you can see from the console output here that the slave has been provisioned. Um, also, if I do kubectl get pods, you can see the slave is now running um, and then our pipeline has started. So in our pipeline, I just did echo hello. I do a git clone and then I do a CD into a folder called Golang and I just do some Docker build. So you can basically build up a pipeline here to do Docker build, Docker run, do some testing and then do Docker push. So full um, container build capability. But we can see we have a pipeline test. Um, it's busy running. You can go ahead and access the logs. We do echo hello. We're doing a git clone. We're doing docker build and this is taking a little while to build. But this is now mounting the docker daemon from the host. So every time you build, your build will basically use the docker cache on the host. So builds should become more efficient over time as as um, it's using the docker cache. The Jenkins pipeline is a good way to do your build CI and CD as code. So here I have an example you can take a look at and this example that I showed you earlier um, where we just define a bunch of stages. So you can have a stage for like doing a git clone, you can do a stage for doing a um, like a unit test run, you can do docker build, docker push in different stages. Um, this is just an example, I'm doing a bunch of shell scripting here where I just say git clone and docker build. 
So you can take a look at Jenkins pipelines on the Jenkins website. Um, there's a, quite a lot you can do with this. But again, I like to keep it simple. Um, keep about two or three or four stages here. Push my image to a registry. And then I like to use a tool like either like Argo CD or Keel or one other of the other um, controllers in Kubernetes that will pull the image from the registry and run your um, containers. So that is a very simple implementation of how you um, deploy Jenkins onto Kubernetes and then use the underlying Docker agent um, to build and push container images. Hopefully you guys like this video. Let me know down in the comments what sort of videos you'd like me to cover in the future. Like and subscribe and until next time, peace.